<laughs> okay, we're now recording. We're yeah. now recording. We're recording. We're live in the mix. We're live. The the the, the noisy uh, the noisy bakery. Um, yeah. Welcome to Coffee, Eggs, and Inspiration. It's a weekly show that goes out over YouTube and as a podcast over all of the major channels. And each week, I get to sit with an inspiring person and listen to them tell their story and share it with all of you. This week is no different. I'm joined by Karina Lepore. Welcome, Karina. Hi. Hi, everyone. So the way this works is when I'm talking, it's just me on the screen. When you talk, it's you on the screen. So I, as I'm talking, you can have a cup of tea or whatever. Fine. whatever you like. yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. But water. Yeah. yeah. So Karina, Karina's joining us from her bakery um, right now, which is why there's noise in the background. Uh, she's an entrepreneur, the managing director of Doe Artisan Bakehouse. Uh, the 2019 winner of BBC uh, Apprentice, The Apprentice Show, um, so now partnering with the, with the help of Lord Sugar uh, in her expansion plans, and we'll talk about that with the, with the help of the £250,000 that, uh, that winning that competition comes, comes with. Um, background is baking, family background in, in baking. Uh, Dave uh, and Carlo, Karina's dad, have been in the game for 60 years. Unfortunately, there was a fire, I think, in 2015 that shut the bakery down. Uh, but uh, Karina and her sister, Rachel, decided to resurrect it in 2018. Uh, and then uh, that led Karina into the apprentice competition. And here we are. Um, massive expansion plans, which I'll, I'll let Karina tell the story of. So welcome, Karina. What an amazing history. Tell me a little bit, first of all, about the background, the history, the family, um, and, and the fire, what happened there. Hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, a bit of background knowledge about Doe Bakehouse and uh, its journey so far, previous. Um, so, my dad is head baker in the business. He's been baking all his life. It's all I've ever known, being a young child. Um, yeah, a few funny stories of me and my sister being young and him coming back covered in flour. We'd like pick it off his arms it was a bit weird but uh yeah he, he's always been a baker um so it's all we've sort of known really and um he's always been a really hard working sort of grafting man uh we're from an italian background so family cooking baking it all sort of goes hand in hand and um sorry we're in the bakery as coffee's some coffee's been made if you can hear noise uh i won't spin it because i'll probably lose connection or something but um, yeah, so back to dad, fine. So he uh, and David Bell, who is a baker here, he's, he's like the, the crazy Irish uncles. You've got your Italian crazy or the crazy Dave. Um, but they're like a bit like chalk and cheese, really. And they've had a really great, successful working relationship since they were young bakers. Um, my dad used to be a, a bakery manager of like Safeways, Tesco's, all these all these supermarket sort of things. And wanted to do something himself. You know, you, know, you want to do something yourself. We've all got that sort of sparking us but only a few of us entrepreneurs actually go and fulfill their dreams and actually live out their real passions so him and dave opened a sort of small time uh, independent little bakery and it was really cute really just everything chucked in you can imagine one of them family-run italian bakeries is all just thrown in but the love and the passion was really there and i think that's what uh, made them sort of a success in Hernhill. hill um so where are we now that's their history we're at 2015 and um yeah, so it was a bit of a tragic experience, really. His uh, lifelong dreams uh, burnt down. It was just a distraught moment. I remember explaining it in The Apprentice. Like, I've never seen my dad at his lowest. Uh, he's always been this figure of strength uh, and, and sort of, oh, he's just this, you know, hardworking man. And I've never seen him, one, cry, two, be at the lowest point in his life. He also was going through some other sort of challenging aspects of life. And... Um, yeah, it was a bit of a turning point for me, really. I remember I'm a ex retail manager for a high street retailer, quite a large one, and I was getting my ten year badge. Actually, they were giving me my badge, and I just thought, oh gosh, this might be my time to to make a leap and do something I've always wanted to do. So I've always wanted to run. Uh, when I was eighteen, I ran my own business, but um, it was a clothing business. I've always sort of cottoned on quite quickly to to wanting to make my own money and and sort of learning as you go so when i was 15 i started a job um for a little high street clothing shop vibe um so cute but uh yeah i was quickly into where does he get his stock and how much money is he making and uh 
you know, very keen at 15 to 16, 17 that I was very interested in the sort of money side and the business side of things and worked it out quite quickly myself and went to the wholesalers myself and sort of went and did it all myself and opened up my own shop, uh, started running the markets on a Sunday, get my get my little friend along with me, pay him, pay him a bit to help me. And uh, that's how I started, yeah. So it was a very young age, everything was new. So you're still learning at the age of 18. So yeah, it was, I was very young and just sort of crazy, did it all. But um, yeah, so that's my sort of where my entrepreneurs, sort of the flair comes from, I think. The hard work and the graft from dad, um, yeah, so now we're at, we're at our lowest. I'm moving. This is what I do when I talk. I move from there, and then I'm back here. Now I'm in 2015, the tragedy. So, yeah, I sat, sat down with Dad, and I said, look, I've always wanted to have a coffee shop. I want to get back into having my own things and being really passionate again. I love my job, but it just you, I wanted more. So um, I said, why don't we merge the two? Why don't we make it a sit-in sort of luxury sort of cafe, a great experience. I'm, I'm great with customers, you know, me and my sister sort of bring this different sort of, sort of energy um and that's what successful business needs is you know great great sort of forefront presence and that's where we wanted the brand to go really so we we designed a brand we sat down had meetings with the relevant people you know we, again we're both learning here we're, we're meeting graphic designers branding website designers all these things for something that we've got a massive vision for building business plans i've never done any of this um and i just said to dad look your passion is baking you know, you can't run a business. It was just, just so stressful. At the start, there was so much like, um, mess, t- loose, loose sort of, uh, what's, the, what's the word? No, there's a blender going off now, sorry. Uh, I knew there'd be a blender, I said it at the start. Um, the bakers are here now, so. Uh, you gotta show us, you can, you have to spin that, you gotta, you gotta show us. Oh, I'll try, hang on. There's Rachel. Hi Rachel. <laughs> Lucas, say hi. Lucas. My son. Hello. Dave. Dave the Bake, famous Dave. Are you in? Is he in? Hello, famous Dave. Yeah. That's famous Dave. So Dave's on the blender at the minute. Um, potentially making maybe a nice peanut butter brownie, pistachio spinach and feta. Spinach and feta. There we spinach go. That's He's making healthy, a lovely yeah. spinach and feta roll. Delicious. <laughs> um, so where am I? I'm at a turmoil spot. Yeah, right. Resurrect him. So then, yeah, the plan was created that we would um, sort of merge, join this these ventures together and um, run a family sort of business together. I mean, who we would never have thought when we were younger that we would all be working in the same, would we? Same sort of business, would we? No, that'd be... A dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> How's that been? Has it been okay for the family? I mean, you, you must have yeah. uh, business-related uh, heated arguments from time to time. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it can get pretty uh, pretty exciting and interesting to watch for the team especially. But, um, yeah, we've, we've made it quite clear from the start that we are a family-run business and family is really important to us. And, that's why when anyone that joins sort of Doe Bakehouse, we're, we're currently interviewing for our new shop, which is Beckenham, I'll get onto soon. Um, but we're going for interviews today, all day, actually, we've been doing interviews and just sort of it, it, making sure that people know how important it is for, for me um, to, to get the right people for us. Because the brand is, it is exciting and I have got big dreams and it's really important for me to make sure these people that come through the doors customers and my team feel really happy and that feel like it's a great place to work the environment is great they want to sit in here and have a coffee you know there might be a bit of banner going on behind the scenes with with dad and rachel or david and some of the team but it's what sort of creates the atmosphere and it's what we've learned along the two years of working together that it does work it's sort of a recipe for success and people do like that independent feel and yeah it, it's it is exciting do you each have your own role? Are you like clear with each other? So, so this is what I'm doing. This is your place on the field, so to speak. And and, and do you divide like that, or do you? Yeah. Do you, do you so, um, <laughs> yeah, there are different, definitely different roles. Dad comes in. You know, he knows he just bakes. That's it. He doesn't interfere with anything else. Doesn't want to. It's too much. You know, take that sort of pressure off his shoulders for a start. So he just needs to create fabulous product, come up with new ideas, and yeah, that's sort of that that aspect of the business and then i will just make sure fingers are in all sort of pies i i use the word spinning the plan figuratively i imagine yeah 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 not a making mess and uh (laughs) yeah the cherry bake well we're holding it no um yeah like i I use that a lot that term spinning the plates make sure everyone's sort of held up that i feel like that's my job so um 
holding everyone up, making sure we're, we've got this vision, everyone knows where we're heading. Um, yeah, so that's my sort of crucial, crucial role. And fantastic. And what led you into The Apprentice? How did that come about? Mm. Sorry, little sip. The Apprentice, what an experience. Best experience of my life. Um, quite a story here as well, really. Um, so I've started to become quite a big believer in um, the law of attraction and I started reading books. This is a few years ago now, pr uh, previously The Apprentice, previous to, to talking to Dad. And I was like, right. So I became quite a big believer in that. I then uh, we opened Doe in 2018. Summer 2018, something weird happened, a little story. And I was sitting here where I am now. It's quite a quiet day. It was in August and the bakery gets really hot in August. So the sitting sort of the numbers drop. Uh, people, it's just too hot. They go to the park, but fine. And so I remember seeing this car drive past and it was like AMS one, the license plate, Lord Sugar's license plate. I knew straight away because I've watched all the, all the series. And I was like, oh my God, Lord Sugar's outside. Rolls Royce, then the range, then the whatever else he's got, Bentley, I can't remember. It's an entourage, you know, like the Queen was coming for it. So I tried to run out <laughs> to get his attention. Uh, I couldn't, I wasn't quick enough. But I immediately thought, right, that's a sign. That is, there's something here, you know, like this is a sign. I've got his books at home. Karen Brady was on my vision board, you know, all these sort of things started to piece together. So I put that in the back of the mind, right, I've seen him, I now need need him, need something. I didn't know what it would be, but there's something there. Um, I applied for the show 2019, January. And you, it, again, I don't I don't watch telly, uh, never have time to watch, watch anything anymore, no soaps, anything, <laughs> literally maybe a bit of Netflix, but no TV. So it was one night and the BBC was on and it come up on the screen last chance to apply for The Apprentice, like last chance. I thought, oh, I just did it on my phone, on the sofa. I then put it into my family, we call it family band, so our WhatsApp group. And um, my sister, my mum, my nan, auntie, everyone's in the group. And uh, I said, oh, watch out guys, you might have Lord Sugar's next business partner on your case. How funny, my mum sent it to the group the other day, it's like a memory message and it was just so weird. I was like, it's come true. Um, so that was how it started, I just did it on the whim not too much fault not too much planning didn't didn't set out to to sort of how it's gone and um then went to the interviews felt a bit like i just rocked up you know totally myself uh looked around it was a bit like a uh, wolf on wall street there was briefcases everywhere there was ego everywhere suits everywhere it was just like whoa i've just come in i'm like hi and um yeah immediately started to feel like Oh, I quite like this, quite like this. It was very tough, very vigorous. Um, you can imagine the the interview process that they have and it, it thousands of people. I think there was 3000 people each day over three days and then you've got other cities. So it was intense, extremely intense. But I was getting like through and I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this, loved it. Then I got the call. So three months later, you get the call in March, April that they want you on the show. You've been successful to out of the 16 people. And I was like, whoa, this is actually happening. I sat down, dad, Dave, Rachel, I was like, this is happening, guys. Like, this could be, at this point, we were all still thinking, all right, yeah, you know, let's see how you do. And then got on the show, great experience, met fabulous people. But that first boardroom with Lord Sugar, Karen and Claude, you know, so intense. Um, what an experience. And uh, ended up winning the show. I don't know if anyone watched the series. It's a fantastic series. A um, lot, of, lot of big characters. Um, I sussed out my competition pretty early on. I knew... I knew two of them were, were pretty good, yeah. Scarlett and Pamela, I'll name drop, because they know I think I rate them both uh, as good, very good business women. But um, I just had this hunger, really, really hunger, wanted to win, wanted to prove myself to Lord Sugar, and uh, ended up doing it. So very happy. You did. I read something or watched something where you were talking about entering each challenge, you know, with that mindset. Just winning being mindset, yeah. Totally winning mindset, yeah. Yeah, that was that was lit. Yeah, you've you've read it or heard it, and that is true. That is what I did every morning. I would so you get the briefing from Lord Sugar, whether at the ice rink or Fort Park, and I would really listen to what he's he's saying. Like he, if he wants a, a a new type of lolly, but it has to have a creative, unique flair spin, I'd be like, right, what's the most unique creative lolly I can do? Or or roller coaster? What's the most unique? I was just always on it. I did not stop. I did not sort of you know let myself slip at all i felt like i was on it every every minute every task yeah i just went in i have to win and i won nine out of ten so pretty happy very well done were you scared of failing 
not afraid of failing. I just uh, don't like the feeling. So the one task that we did lose all day, I was kicking myself. Why did I not work out what the toad was? Karen Brady said it to me as like a joke, like, oh, like, toad, like, like but we've never, you know, and then I think, yeah, it's, I'm not afraid of it. I just don't like the feeling. It doesn't suit me. It doesn't sit well with me that I'm in the loser's calf because I'm not a loser. I like to win. I like to succeed. Um, but if I've put my all in, I mean, even that task I lost, I put my whole energy into that. And it just, you know, the other team did a bit better on that that one. OK, you know, let them have it. But uh, yeah, didn't, didn't feel like a failure. I just don't like to lose. And how did you pick yourself up from that when you had that disappointment? And I'm sure other dis disappointments in your life as well. What's your technique for coping, moving on and, and, and looking up? Yeah, uh, I've had to work on this and I'm sure everyone has their different ways of working on it. I think for me, it was about um, sort of uh, giving in to help and support. That's something I've learned. So I have great, great network around me. My team are fantastic. My sister's fantastic. Um, yeah, and just sort of allowing that to, to, to allowing the support, allowing other people to, to take the rain sometimes, you know, while I was away in the house. They, they ran the, the show, they ran the business. I remember telling Claude in one of my interviews, because you get one phone call a week from, from home. So my sister would ring me every week and be like, oh, we're having great, loads of bloggers are coming in, we're 20% up on the week, etc." And I told Claude and he was like, oh, they don't need you then. I was like, oh, shut like, a great leader <laughs> embeds it in their team, surely. Um, so uh, yeah, managed to get out of that one. Um, yeah, but it, it was just great and yeah, I think, that's uh, that's really what I do. Just allowing myself to sometimes sometimes let go. A great leader embeds that in their team. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, and what's it like? What's it like uh, working with Lord Sugar? Oh, he's um, everything you see. He's literally like so to the point. It is. It's um, sort of surreal sometimes. A bit like we uh, throughout the pandemic. Obviously, we've been in in touch quite a bit and. Um, doing Zoom calls instead of we would do normally a more monthly board meeting, but now it's all been sort of like this structure over over laptop. New for me and him, you could tell. We're both like, how do I log in and what am I doing? Um, so we, we had to adapt to that. Um, he was very sort of, uh, what's the word, supportive and positive throughout COVID because at first I was like a bag of mess. I didn't know what to do, didn't know should we open, what's safest for the teams, how, how can I keep everyone happy? Um, so yeah, spoke to to him, see what we thought we should do. I was quite keen to stay open. Bread is an essential source, as long as everyone was happy. That was my main thing, and he was totally supportive on what rules we wanted to embed. And we quickly did everything, uh, every put everything in place. I didn't even have a team member coming in on public transport. Made sure people got Ubers in if they if they had to use use the train. Um, the rest of us drive, so it was fine. But you know, just make sure everyone was happy and felt supported in in their roles. Well, not only did you stay ho open in Hearn Hill, but you've opened a new one, I think, in April. Um, uh, no, we like haven't that. opened it yet. You haven't opened it. Well, you've got a new one coming. You mentioned it earlier, Beckenham, yep. right? Yeah, Beckenham High Street for the South Londoners out there. They'll know it. And uh, it's a lovely area, like Hearn Hill, just a, a fabulous area. And uh, it's got a great high street. It's got great potential. So that's why we, we chose there. Um, yeah, that is due to open end of August, beginning of September, depending on plans. But it's going well pop in there all the time and yeah plans are sort of going really well so very excited well then what uh, what's the plan beyond that you've got big you've got a big dream right the, the doe empire is is the plan the i've said it again i've said it on the show anyone that would have watched the show would have seen me in one of them interviews when uh, i got challenged on one in two thousand shops and how many high streets are in the uk and i just plucked this number from my head i thought oh, i haven't researched that how many high streets two thousand I don't know what I said, but um, the, the point was still there and the point was still valid that I just wanted it to be a very successful brand. I want everyone to be able to experience what we've got to offer. You know, we've got fabulous team, fabulous product, uh, great energy. And I just want that to, to be on every high street. I think people deserve that. They deserve to have a bit of dough in their lives. We all deserve a bit of dough. That's a great line. Well, watch out, Greg's um, wonderful. Oh, yeah, I said that as well, yeah. But wonderful things to come uh, on, on that, Karina. Uh, there's probably a few people watching this who are not only admiring your story, but thinking about their own story, whether they're coming out of school or maybe uh, looking looking for another job or doing a pivot in the middle of their career. Um, 
what advice would you have for them based on everything that you've learned? Yeah, I've, um, I've gone back to my old school, actually, and it was quite inspiring to talk to students who, who sort of have this, this really keen passion. They want to be entrepreneurs and they feel a bit lost because you're at that age. I'm, oh, God, I said to them, if I had had someone, not that blow my mind, like me, come in and talk to them at my age when I was in school, if that may even make sense, that sentence, but if I had someone back then tell me um, to, to really just go for it, you're going to get people... Uh, who are, who are really safe like my mum she's one she's such a safety mum she's like oh why don't you, you sure you want to you know risk that or oh god how are you going to manage that how are you going to be a full time mum and uh, manage a business like ah she's a bit ah but you have to break through these sort of uh, stereotypes and moulds and you you really have to give it your all nothing is going to sort of fall in your lap I've learned that as well without the hard work and the energy you will not sort of achieve your dream. So yes, I've got like believe tattooed on my hand. Me and my sister went and got matching ones. Just so if we're in down days, we can just sort of refer back to, we can do this. Like you can do it. If you really believe in yourself, you can do it. If, as long as you've got the hard work uh, and, and you're ready to put in that, then I think you'll succeed 100%, but you have to go for it. Um, yeah, again, age doesn't really matter if you're coming out of school or if you're a 30 year old woman <laughs> like me, like, doesn't matter if you've got something stirring in your in your belly and in your gut then definitely go push through and um yeah live you go and get your dreams well fantastic advice i i, I think we've got we've got a uh, a dough empire in store for us uh, and our bellies are going to be full yes karina lapore thank you so much for joining me you're an inspiration thank you thanks for having me